Hi guys! Welcome back to my orchid channel. These are my Kedisidney type orchids. Species mixed up with hybrids. I chuck these guys, larger guys, away on the floor, but still in a bright light. Yeah, I saw no reason for these guys to take up the normal spot, space when resting. And these three guys, yeah, they had a new spot up here on the shelf above my stove. You know why? They were having scale. Scale on Kedisedna type orchids. Uh, yeah, that shouldn't even be possible, but it is. And you want to know where they get it. Yeah, to the pseudobulbs. Under the sheath. That's why it's so important to uh, peel off the sheath. Yeah, not all of you has got it. I mean scale. But on these guys, they seem to be really, really persistent. Look here. I cleaned this one up two weeks ago. Thoroughly. With uh, alcohol. Cotton tissue. So, it's still there. So, but it's not spreading at least, and my scale situation in my collection is much better. Ah, this one is Catacetum Charles Worthy Eye times Catacetum Ornitoides from MSB. I had this one for a few years now. 17, I think, or 18, I think I got this one. So, and it's always been a good grower. It's got good plump pseudobulbs. Everything is neat and plump and shiny, so to speak. And this is this year's growth. And as you can see, I haven't reported this one. And it's in divided. It's been divided into two pieces. So this one was <laughs> growing really, really huge and tall. So I figured maybe give away one piece. That one was the worst case. This one is better. This is a, <laughs> it's a root on the tag. An old root, yeah. Catacetum sanguinea. Yeah, this one is growing really well. I had it since it was really, really tiny from Orchid Garden in Poland. Yeah, a few years now, a few years back. I haven't ordered anything from that nursery for a while. I used to order from her eBay shop, Orchid Sklepik. Oh yeah, I got some decent plants and a few not so decent when they arrived. But, well, since she doesn't have her eBay shop, open anymore or I can at least I cannot find it under the name Orchid Sklepik. Um there hasn't been any new purchase from her since ever since. But yeah, this one is growing roots. Yeah, this is really, really significant for this one to grow a huge bunch of fat roots. And this tiny tiny little thingy coming out from the <laughs> huge amount of roots here. So this one is a strong plant. Yeah, this one is mislabeled. It says Clovisia dodsoniana. If it doesn't produce uh, female blooms, which are really, really, really different from the male blooms, this may be the right variety. Yeah. So, let's, yeah, repot her very soon. And here's my, yeah, one of the best ones I got. Surprisingly the best one. It's one I've been after for many years. I had a few uh, seedlings. I think I had about two seedlings. One from the orchid board and one from orchid garden. But uh, they just withered away slowly but surely. So Moniara Millennium Magic Witchcraft from Swerta Orchidin. When I saw it, this one in the web shop for only 1995 euro as a blooming size one eye, well, I couldn't resist. I would be a fool. Even though I told myself not to buy any more catacetums. Since I'm not growing them so well anymore. No, I don't know why. If it's the change of windows into, uh, into three glass from two glass or whatever is wrong nowadays. I rebloomed catacetums a few years ago. It all went so well. That's why I got a few more. About 50 more. <laughs> in a haze. So, but now I decided not to get any more until I figure out a way to make them rebloom 
and thrive again. So, but this one, yeah, it's been doing great. No scale. Roots are still alive down there. And I've been giving this one a trickle of water um, during dormancy. Since its roots are still alive, some of them. Yeah, didn't do it any harm. This little new growth, this tiny new growth it uh, produced last year, last summer. It produces a little one there. And this is a new growth for this year. Yeah. And yet another one to the side. So I figure this one will need a wider pot for this year, reparting. And the last one, Catacetum After Dark Black Pearl. Um, I got it in June 17, I think, from an orchid board. Yeah, And it bloomed January 18. Yeah, and at that time I really, really thought that I was a pro on growing catacetony type orchids. Yeah. But boy, was I surprised when this one never, never, ever rebloomed. Even though it produces good sized pseudobulbs, a huge number of them, every year. But yeah, no blooming anyway. And yeah, I cannot have it like this, as you all guessed up here. Its root, roots will dry out and it won't have any room for them. So it will need a repot today. But yeah, the blooms were amazing, and I also gave that one a trickle of water during dormancy. Today I, well, I should have uploaded or uh, made, produced perhaps, my Repot or Not Repot video on the orchids I got from Hans Christiansen and Orchidin Gartneriet in Denmark. But I figured this it was more urgent, a little bit more urgent to deal with, so that will be the next video. Well, this is not much to save, is it? I need to get rid of the scale, no matter what kind of hassle this one will have to be put through. Doesn't matter. As I told you, if I see some new scale on my orchids in my collection, there will be a, an immediate perch. Nothing will stop me. This division is not as bad as the other one, scale-wise, really. It's a much better. So what I do need to do is look out for the new roots. They may be down there already. You may never know when it comes to ketacetony type orchids. Yeah, as you can see, quite long root. This one is dead. Yeah. Uh, it's not easy to determine which ones are alive and which ones are not. Yeah. As you can see, this root is all the way down here. I would have ripped it off if I didn't see it now. Maybe I'll save a few to use them as an anchor down there. Even though it looks green, it's not alive. So it's quite difficult with ketacetum roots. Alcohol. I clean it off thoroughly. Here. And a second new growth is really, really developing here as well. So, this one can be a good story. <laughs> Needs to be reported though. Yeah, now we got this one. This ugly one. So, I will divide it into two separate divisions. So, now it's divided. Looks great. A good cut, really. Now it's easier for me to get rid of the moss. I'm gonna cut them away thoroughly. So maybe lurking about to the middle. Yeah, as for here. I will need to go down there with some alcohol. And I will need to peel off all of its old sheath. Now this one is a really, really good grower, fast grower. Produces a lot of new pseudobulbs each year. So, I'm not scared that it won't become a good grower one more time. So now I'm even going to spray it with the alcohol. Yeah. And put it aside and see what happens. If it's appropriate to uh, bring it to my next Orchid Society meeting or not. To sell it or maybe, maybe sell it this time. And let it stay somewhere safe. 
to dry off. And for this catecidum, the so-called Dodsoniana, yeah, this one will, re will receive different kind of treatment. <laughs> Let's just be careful and just peel away a little bit of its old moss here. These roots are dead. Wait, just peel them off as well. Yeah. The new roots are all the way down there already. Somebody says that when an orchid looks like this, leafing out and everything, it's about time to water it. I will object to that, so it's not time yet, really. Not for this one. After a while, after some time, you get to know your catacidony types and its uh, habits and behaviour from previous years. So, I'm just going to leave it be like this. I'm not going to fuss about with it anymore. I am going to leave a whole bunch of new sphagnum moss to the front here. And no styrofoam peanuts or anything to the bottom this time. The roots will need the space. So that's my decision for this year. Maybe next year there will be another solution. But uh, this is what's going to happen this year for it. Only some moss, nothing else. I found that far too heavy amount of this um, slow-release fertilizer may burn the roots. At least in my condition. Strange, but it happened. So. Let's tie her up. A new growth, though it will grow upright a bit more than it is. This one may lean to the side a little bit too much if not taken care of in time. So, yeah, the Dodsoniana <laughs> wannabe is softly reparted. Like this. And I reckon the very same treatment goes for this one as well. The species Catacidum sanguineum. Sanguinea, I cannot see. Let's just <coughs> peel off the root. <laughs> Yeah, sanguineum, not ah, sanguineum. Yes, very same treatment, it's going to stay in this part. Its roots are already kind of long, as you can see, and well established down into the media. I will not fuss about with that one. Even though this may be the very right time to repot. Yeah, I've seen it. Um, orchid nurseries, they are repotting when the roots are about four inches. So... There's nothing wrong with this method, really. And soft repartings has turned out to be yeah, quite beneficial. Disturbing roots are worse than one can ever imagine. Sometimes necessary though, but uh, yeah. Now at least it's down there and it can do its, its uh, thing and hydrate the roots and grow kind of big. As well. The Sanginium, a species. Really, really interesting looking uh, flowers on this one. Look like small owls. <laughs> and gets it go. And a thin layer of um, coconut husk fiber chips to prevent our uh, algae build up to the top. It's proved to be quite satisfying method. Really works. So let's add it to the other guys as well, before I forget it, a little bit. Or you can even use a uh, small grade bark or anything you prefer, not too dry, media. This Moniara, three road cross as I call it, and its roots are still alive, some of them, down to the reservoir. They really are, so I won't do much with it. Except for, <laughs> yeah, ah, that went better and easier than expected. Really nice. Oh, maybe this cluster is not live, but these guys are. Um, anyway, 
It's still sitting in the uh, media it arrived in and it's so tightly pressed. So uh, maybe next year I will get rid of the whole lot, but not this year. Things that are obviously not looking great, I will snap, <laughs> rip off. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's uh, stiff as yeah. Heck. Yeah, this is the way it's going to be. Of course, I won't exaggerate far too much. <laughs> I know that this one is the heaviest drinker of them all. It needs a huge amount of fertilizer and water. I even gave it a water reservoir and it drank it all up in no time. So this time, with three new growth on the way, even, there will be a larger pot. Ah, there, yeah, it's always a risk. But the, yeah, the most severe risk on this guy is that it won't re receive enough amount of water. So I'm not all that scared. And for this one, I will give a little bit of um, slow release fertilizer and perlite, of course. A lot of perlite, so just in case. Just in case I'm wrong. And in this case, I, I don't think I am. So now, a lot of holes to the bottom, so where the roots can pass. But still, it's not going all the way down as I had wished for. So I will have to release uh, some of its roots to the bottom. And I will have to cut it here. Unfortunately, you meet up with some difficulties on the way. The whole lot will go a little bit more down into the pot. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's a lot better. But then you see the little one here. You not want to bury that one, nor this one to the other side. So what to do, guys? Yeah, you need to get rid of stuff to the back here. Yep, that's what you do. Need to do. Ugh. Yep. Press the oldest part to the back as much as possible, maybe uh, put a stake there or something like that. So we can lean this one uh, a little bit forward in order to make this guy's new roots meet with some humidity. Yeah, you can see there are uh, almost stopped growing there yeah, and there are a few coming underneath here. Maybe I can release this little sheath and um, in that way also expose the roots so yeah let's see now what we can do yeah 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 down you go <laughs> it's better it's not great but it's better and this poor little thing down there, here. <laughs> yeah, let's see if that one survives. I'm not sure yet. But this is the most important part, that this one survives. And grow some good roots. Yes. And perhaps... For now, lean this one a bit to the front. That's strange, but uh, for now, so the roots will go down and then I can bend it up a bit more after a while, after time. So now we've got this new growth here, exposed, not buried. And yeah, we need some more moss here to the middle, but uh, yeah, just try to. 
and we got this little thingy here a little bit buried but I'm trying yeah yeah it's the best I can do for now so Moniara Millennium Witchcraft reported and it will stay in this deep container this high one so there will be some space for a water reservoir to the bottom even this year yes from now on I will hydrate a little bit around the uh, spray a little bit around the um, rim of the pot here the water and of course a bit of um, coconut tusk fiber chips will be here as well but I can add a little bit more later on peeling 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 I love peeling <laughs> yeah just checking to see if there's anything bad going on here but in that room uh, it's almost gay free except for one or two plants now so yeah this one ain't affected uh, the same goes with this one. I'm also using it quite a high outside container, a uh, slim one, <laughs> to fit in my IKEA stand. With the rings, you know, you've seen that one. Yeah, and I've been using this um, kind of flat bottom one with holes to the side. And well, I'm gonna keep that concept. And yeah, let's see. This one is a little bit more mixed up with the uh, um, bark and stuff. And it's, uh, yeah, I made a total repot on this, this guy last spring. If you saw the video on my um, Black Pearl, After Dark Black Pearl. Uh, yeah, these guys are actually really dead, bone dry. No life left to them, so let's save us some space and get rid of them. Yeah. And yeah, let's see now how much space do we have. Well, really, not much. It's the same story with this guy. It's getting too high up. So, yeah. Let's rearrange things again. Get rid of the styrofoam. Peanuts. Packing peanuts. Yeah, you can see the roots are kind of long. So, it's not, not long now before I will begin to order this one. One and a half month, I believe. One month, maybe. Yeah, I can just cut away a bit of this. Yeah, it really doesn't make a difference. Yeah, now, now we're getting there. Yeah. Great success. Yes. Now, I'm just gonna cut some moss, add some perlite. Add it around the orchid. Boom! And not so much to the back side, only to the front side, so there will be space left for it to grow. Good roots and good fat new growth here. And as I did for the other one, press it to the back side as always when I'm trying to uh, repot orchids. Yep. Yeah, and there is now some good space left for it to grow some lovely new roots and everything. Okay. Uh, next year maybe it will have to be divided or upsized. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks kind of okay, I think. And now add some coconut husk fiber chips to it. Now I'm working really fast. <laughs> yeah, what a feat. A little stake here, just for st some stability. This one is, uh, yeah, it's growing really nicely upright. So I'm not gonna bother with this one. And uh, yeah, it's okay, I think. This is good enough repotting um, on a good orchid. So guys, now we're there. Dodsoniana, repot it. Looks like this. Sanguinea. Um, <laughs> looks like this. And the Charles Worth the Ice Times Only to Eat us. Looks like this. And these three divisions, spare divisions, cleaned with alcohol. It's going to put, be put on a tray under observation <laughs> for a while until 
next Orchid Society meeting on the 23rd of April. And uh, let's see if I can bring them to sell them or put up on the lottery. If they're scale free by then. As for this guy, After Dark, Black Pearl, Fred Clark Yara, there's <laughs> also three Road Cross Orchid. I forgot to mention. Yeah, so of me, my mistake. This one is just as much of a three road cross as the Moniara Millennium Magic Witchcraft is. I might as well just admit I forgot it. I'm gonna add some water to the bottom to lure down the little new roots to the right direction. And the same method goes for this one. And these guys are gonna hang next to each other in my Ikea stand. And hopefully, any year now, they will bloom. Maybe put them out on my balcony this summer. Yeah, yeah, I've tried almost everything in order to, to get them into bloom. Especially this one, of course. The other one I haven't had for uh, much longer than one and a half years. But this one I had since uh, 2017. So <laughs> it's about time for you guys to um, start to bloom again. Yeah. But anyway, I hope you like this little video. Uh, Kid Sydney type orchid growing is not for everybody. Not everybody fancy it. They, yeah, it's kind of uh, difficult to get them going. Uh, or shall we say keep them going on, really. First year you may succeed, since it's living on its previous year's treatment. <laughs> well, not being negative, but that happened to me. Won't happen to everybody. Uh, that's why I'm growing a little bit tired of it, but these three guys are gonna stay. I like them. <laughs> Here they are, <laughs> in the cross line of the fog. <laughs> Ultrasonic humidifier. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, take care and I hope you had a great or having a great Easter vacation or weekend, holiday, and talk to you soon. Bye bye!